side. Um, so we have foil all around this thing. Okay, uh, opening it up. There's the coil inside. A nice fit now. You can see the uh, outer um, circumference nicely fits in the... Um, and it's possible that these angles here, the tetrahedron angle and the coil angle, uh, have some sort of lens effect, or maybe the spinning uh, electromagnetism here can attract uh, particles and make them bounce, 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 bounce off of the foil. Who, who knows? But uh, these these angles are interesting. Um, the there's a clip lead here for the top of the coil that goes out and connects to the outside surface, and the other clip lead, this yellow one, connects to the inside surface, and then this red line is my single wire uh, AC voltage coming out, a uh, sort of very Tesla-ish concept of using only a single wire. Um, and beyond that it's all isolated. This, so this, the only wire coming out of this box is this red one feeding into the AC to DC converter uh, voltmeter down here. So, um, <clears throat> Right now we are reading uh, six millivolts, and I have a load that is a. Uh, let's see if I can. This is the load. It is a hundred k ohm resistor. Six point seven. Six point seven squared divided by a hundred k is 448 picowatts. So that's very, uh, very, very tiny amount of power. So now we're going to turn on this thing. And it's not touching. Oh, we'll make a touch later, but... Um, and now the voltmeter is climbing rapidly. To... Um, well, it hasn't settled down yet, still. So it seems to be settling right around there at 30.6 volts. Square that, divided by 100K. equals 9 milliwatts which is um, which is a decent amount of power uh, that you know you can run LEDs and stuff off of that no problem um, yeah let's see another interesting thing to show is um, I have these LEDs on the breadboard here, um, and this and the, and what one's diode is going this way and one's going that way. This is a, a Avramenko plug. Okay, uh, if I take the input wire or the, the this red wire connected to the LEDs, this is the them being lit as an Avramenko plug. That so there's you know plenty of power here to light LEDs as opposed to uh, having it run through this circuit. But that power is, again, uh, I'm cheating because the power is actually coming from that uh, that power source there, uh, entering this capacitor, wiggling the coil all the way down to the LEDs here. Let that charge up again. Even with these 100 microfarad caps, it takes a little while to charge up. Oh, and I had to remove the ground. Let me put that back. 
connect the ground, you'll notice it goes more rapidly. Because now there's a path to ground through this circuit. Okay, you know, inverse squared law, this is a certain distance. If you if you move this oops, if you move this away a little bit, just by a few inches, the voltage drops accordingly. If you move it closer, now I'm like an eighth of an inch away. Voltage goes up. And if I actually have it touch, it arcs at a certain oscillation, kind of slow. And now we are going up into the 60 volt range, which is pretty high. Uh, actually, my caps are 50 volts, so I'm going to back off on that. <laughs> The uh, yeah, it's draining down. The the issue with um, this type of capacitor is if you start to exceed their uh, volt voltage rating, they can start to they can explode on you, and that would be dangerous. Sometimes they hurl uh, matter out; it could hit you in the eye or something. Um, okay, so you know, this being. A source of radiation, this plasma ball being a source of radiation, is hitting the antenna, space-time antenna, and we are able to convert that to DC and sort of get it with a very modest load of a 100, 100k resistor, sort of get a voltage up, up to this point.